Great afternoon and welcome back to my channel. My name is Loris Anderson and I wanted to come on and talk about a few things and I'm going to try to keep this very brief. I am very long-winded. I can talk. <laughs> I can talk. If it's a topic that I'm sure of, I can really speak on that. However, I wanted to come on and the first thing that I'm going to do is um, give a shout out to one of the podcast broadcasters. Her name is Jessica Reedy, if I'm pronouncing it right, and I do hope if I'm not, charge it to my head, not my heart. But I happen to be surfing through some channels, and it's called Hello Hubby. And I got on there, and um, this particular one that I was watching was talking about um, a narcissistic relationship that she had involved herself in. Now, whether or not she titled it that, don't quote me on that. However, some of the things she talked about brought tears to my eyes. I've been there. I was um, in a relationship and I was reluctant to talk about it. And I knew that God was impressing in my spirit to share. And I kept saying, God, I'm not a social media person and I don't want to be on there sharing my business. So, Please indulge with me for just a moment. I wanted to talk about the fact that some of the things she talked about woke me up in certain areas. And it allowed me to know um, that just like her story, and I wanted to thank you, Jessica. I wanted to thank you. I want to thank you, Jessica, because your story being broadcast woke me up in some areas, although I understood what was happening to me and what had happened to me. But I realized we have to talk about certain things. We have to talk about certain things because I never want anyone to go through what I went through. Now let's dive right into it. Um, I, I was married for a little over 27 years and we have three wonderful adult offspring from that union. I have now been divorced for six years, for six years. And so three years into my divorce, um, I wasn't looking for anybody or anything like that. However, I happened to be at a place I was supposed to be at, having my car worked on and ran into a gentleman, long story short, we end up talking, um, we exchanged numbers, he did call me, um, I did accept a date out with him, we went for a nice walk, it was nice, the way he presented himself, he was such a gentleman, he was very wholesome, he was very nice, um, we went on to go out several times and I found that each time we went out, we could laugh, we could talk, um, we shared, you know, stories and things of that nature. He, he was married um, a couple of times and divorced. Um, and I found myself really being intrigued by this guy. He was wonderful. Now, I will go on to say, because this particular channel is dedicated to my God and my God only. So I don't care who likes it, who doesn't like it. If you don't like what I'm saying, don't look at my channel. I'm just telling you. I will be free to talk about God. I will be free to talk about what God has done for me. I will be free to talk about the name of Jesus. I will be free to talk about holiness or hell. I will be free to talk about the evidence of speaking with other tongues. I will be free to say that. So if you don't like this channel, don't come to it. That's all I can tell you. I'm not going to let anybody steer me from what I know to be true. And I'll go on to say this. It doesn't matter who's watching this video if you so choose to watch it and you feel like, I remember her when. Because when you live in a city all your life, people know you. When they recognize your face and they recognize your name, they know who you are. Some you have partied with, some you drank with, some you smoked with, some you done other things with. You I just want you to know, I'm not that girl now. I am so far from that. 
So I don't have to show you anything. I don't have to prove to you anything. Say what you want, but do understand this. Understand what is coming out of my mouth. I am not here for you, if that's the way you feel. I am here for the one God has appointed me for. Let's say it again so you understand. If there's something you have to say about me, if there's something you feel about me, don't write me any negative messages. I'm free to talk with anyone. If you want to talk with me, reach out. I'll do my best to reach back. But what I won't do, I won't feed into negative mess. I won't feed into anything that comes across as being negative. I'm telling you, I'll just delete it. So with that being said, if this is the channel for you, then I say stay tuned because we're going to talk about a few things. If not, don't. Now, let's get me back on track. I was in this relationship and Jessica, I'm telling you, I am talking to you, Sister Jessica. <laughs> I am talking to you because I was in that relationship and it was so wonderful. He treated me like. We would go places. We would do things. He introduced me some, to some of the things he would do and, you know, going salsa dancing and, you know, all, all that, just some of the stuff, playing tennis. Not that it was foreign to me. I just didn't do those things. And, you know, he liked working out and hiking and I liked all that stuff. So it fit well and I'm telling you, it was phenomenal. I got a chance to meet his son, um, hit it off well with his son, you know, no problems there. However, I started to feel something. Maybe six months in, and I'll never forget one evening after we went out, um, we had a small disagreement while we were riding in the vehicle. And it was a small disagreement. But I noticed his level of frustration with me disagreeing with what he was putting out. And I was puzzled. I was a little taken aback. I didn't know how to respond. For one, I was in his vehicle. Um, I had yet to see him in an anger mode. So I wasn't quite sure as to what was going to happen. So I found myself calming me down so that I could see to it that I was in safety before I opened my mouth. Because if you know me... You say something I disagree with, I was going to give you my feedback on it. Simple. You say something that I didn't like, I'm going to let you know. I don't like that. That don't work for me. However, I found myself being so taken aback that I allowed him to win that argument. Because I felt something behind it. And I wasn't quite sure because I had never experienced that before. Long story short, he got back. I got in my car. I went on home and I'll never forget the spirit speaking to my spirit and telling me, run, Lori, get out of there. I remember it. I remember it. But we were several months in. And I had begun to become a little fond of him. He filled a lot of my spare time. You know, being an empty nester. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of time on my hands. I got off of work. I, you know, I always, you know, had a family that I cooked for. Always had someone to eat dinner with. And so he filled that void. But I could feel my spirit saying, it's not for you. That stayed with me, all that argument and what the spirit was speaking to my spirit all that night that stayed with me. I ignored it. We then went on several other outings together. And 
we always seemed to have a disagreement. And sometimes he would spark the disagreement. But then there was times that he could be so nice and cuddly and lovey-dovey and sweet and we would have great conversation. And the aura between us was really, really great. But it kept happening. And one day, in my kitchen, I was alone. No one was there but me. I just remember listening to music. And I couldn't figure out, why am I listening to this kind of music? I don't even like this kind of music. Why am I? And I realized he often played this kind of music. Make a long story short, I end up dealing with this relationship for three years. Three years. On again, off again. Angry at each other, back together. Fighting, back together. I don't mean fist fighting, but with words, back together. He would tell me that I need to just be quiet and listen and say yes sometimes. And I would say to him the same thing. You need to be quiet and listen and just say yes sometimes. And all while we were doing that a third time, Spirit spoke to me. He said, get out, Lori. Get out of this. This is not for you. And I used to say to him, something's not right. Something don't feel so right. I'm a little uncomfortable, you know. But I would keep going back because my heart began to fall for him. My heart began to fool me. And I've got a video out there called The Heart. And it talks about the wickedness where the scripture talks about our heart is deceitful and wicked. That old deceitful heart began to tell me you love him and you can't do without him. And you want him in your life and this and that and this and that. And every argument, I would find my way back. And with every argument, he would do as little as possible to get me back. And with every argument, I would find myself justifying what happened. And with every argument, you see where I'm going? One day, something happened. I didn't like it. I knew I had for sure caught him in one of the biggest lies that he always, he always swore up and down. It wasn't so. Every time I would question him about, it's not that, it's not that, that's in your head, that's in your head. And I started questioning myself. Something happened that I didn't like. And just like that old deceitful heart that I talked about on my video called the heart, this heart thinks, it feels, and it acts. And I allowed my heart, that old deceitful, wicked heart, after God told me to get out of there three times, to respond in a way that end up getting me in some trouble. Because I was going to take it upon myself to let him know how hurt I was. didn't have to tell me anymore because I was in a very dark place after that a very dark place a very dark place I never imagined myself being because the wickedness and the deceitfulness of my heart was telling me one thing and my emotions was feeling something else and oh god it was just so much I just and that person I had turned out to be But then came God. You've listened this far. Continue to listen. But then came God. And the same way God spoke to me those three times to tell me to get out of there. You don't belong here. This is not what I want from you. This is not it. This is not it. I don't care what you feel. This is not it. Run for your life. Get out of here. 
Resist the devil and he'll flee. Get out of here. Don't allow this person to, to gaslight you the way that they are. Don't allow this person to lie to you anymore. Don't allow this person to confuse conversation and turn it all around like a Rubik's Cube. You know, you ask him something about the present that's happening and they mix it all up. And before you know it, you're like, well, where am I? Don't allow that to happen to you anymore. But God came along. He forgave me. <laughs> That's the kind of God we serve. The scripture tells us that a broken and a contrite spirit, God will not turn away from. He said he can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. God said that if you make your bed in hell, I'll be there with you. Call on me. He hears the faintest cry. And my cry was quite faint. I was in a dark place. No one could reach me but God. And I know that. This story has so many other levels and avenues to it. And one day when we can talk about it, I will freely sit there and talk about it because God had to deliver me from something that had its hold on me. And right now, today, every day, I thank God for snatching me from the hand of the enemy. That enemy had its grip on me. And God sent a cease and desist warning to that enemy over my soul. God told him, no, this is not happening. You're not going to win this one. I want her. I need her. I got something for her to say. I need her to tell somebody else. And guess what? She's crazy enough to trust me. That was God saying that to that enemy. She's crazy enough to trust me. She's crazy enough to do it because she loves me. She's in a dark place right now, but give me time. I'm putting her back together. I'm getting her together. I'm giving her what she needs. And with that being said, Ooh, I tell you, God has brought me a long way. And I so appreciate him. And I've learned several things I wish I didn't have to, but I have. And I thank God. I thank him. I don't feel sorry for myself because I didn't listen. That voice that you hear from God speaking to your spirit. You know how we say, Something told me. When it's the good thing, that one ain't going to tell you nothing uh, good. Uh, he's going to tell you things like, uh, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're dumb, listen to him, go on and smoke that weed, girl, hit that pie, drink that drink, get behind your wheel and drive, and you know you've had six drinks. Go on and have sex with that man. Go on and lay up with that woman. Rob that bank. Punch that person's lights out. Those are things devil going to tell you. He ain't going to tell you nothing good. He ain't going to tell you get to safety. Something's getting ready to harm you. I want you to feel better about yourself. He ain't going to tell you that. So when you hear that still, small voice speaking to your spirit, that's God. That is God Almighty speaking to you. Who's you to listen? Young lady, young man, you don't have to be in the place that you're in. God is not a respecter of persons. He'll hear your cry. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter where you are. That doesn't matter. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. God don't care. Because while I was crying out, sitting at the park in my car, cry, I didn't want anybody to hear me cry the way I was crying. I had a pack of cigarettes beside me. <laughs> I had a pack of 
sing that to this guy for me. My voice was so faint, so weak, so exhausted, so used up, devastated, disgusted. My world was turned upside down. And that small voice that lifted up his eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help, from my help, my help comes from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is Thy shade upon thy right hand, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thy soul. He shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth. And that cry was saying, help me, God. And God did it. So I know it's been 21 minutes. I try not to make them this long. And there's so much more I could say about this. But if you get nothing else from this, just know that you can call upon the name of Jesus. He said he would be a very present help in time of trouble. Call him. I'm telling you, call wherever you are. Call him. Call him. He'll answer you. He'll answer. He'll answer. He'll answer. Don't talk about, well, you know, I, I'm not ready to get through drinking. I'm not ready to get through smoking. I ain't ready to stop sleeping around. You know, I still want to be this bad dude going out here and gangstering and doing what I'm doing. God will hear you. And he knows when you are sincere, when you're calling from him, from that brokenness. It's the reason why you're where you are. Something in you is broken. It's hurting. Is in pain. Something. Let God heal you. Let God draw you into him. Let God place you in his bosom and wrap his arms around you. I tell you, there's no feeling like it. And the only thing I can say for that individual who did the damage that they did, thank you. You helped me. You helped deliver me into the hands of an all-knowing God. Ooh, you helped me to see how far I had fallen from God. And you helped me to know how great of a God I serve. That he heard that faint cry. Like that mother that hears her child cry out of 30 other children. You know that cry. I've been there. My daughter cried out at one time and I thought she's in the church nursery and I'm thinking that's my daughter. And I'm way in the sanctuary. But I heard that cry. And true enough, she had slipped on a piece of toy and hurt herself. He does it better than that. There's a million people, a zillion, billion people all over this world. And whenever someone calls upon him, he knows exactly who you are, where you are, and what needs to be done. And it doesn't catch him by surprise. He's not overworked. He's not overbooked. He's ready for you. I'm telling you, he's ready. And God did me that way. He heard that faint cry. And for some reason or another, because of God, my cry began to become stronger and stronger and stronger every day. Stronger. I began to absorb myself in him, just wrap myself in him. Everything about me was finding out more about God because it wasn't enough for me to bounce back because I knew about God. I'm saved. I know about him. I had the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I had all that. But me being off course dimmed my voice, 
shaded my light and drew me further and further and further away from God. So I'm just here to tell you, it's a long video. If you listened all the way through, thank you. If you didn't, I hope you were able to glean something that would be of strength to you. Do know I don't apologize for anything that I've said. I don't apologize for anything that I have put out there. Take it for what it's worth. I'm telling, I'm telling you that. Take it for what it's worth. You don't believe me? Try God. Believe him. I'm not asking you to believe me. You know, I'm this flawed man. I'm not asking you to believe me. Trust God. Trust him. Have faith in him. I'm telling you. The scripture tells us without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I had the faith to know you can move mountains. This is nothing for you. Heal my heart, God. Take away the hurt. Remove the burden. Give me light in the midst of all this darkness. And he did. And I've been smiling ever since, honey. My soul is on fire. Well, enough said. I've been going on and on and on, but I needed to say that. I had to say that. I see so many people hurting in these relationships. And Jessica, thank you. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate you for saying what you said. Do I agree with everything Jessica has said? No, I'm not trying to tell you all that Everything she says is, no, I'm saying what it did for me. God allowed me to stumble up on that channel. And I thank you. I thank you for being as transparent as you was. You were, you said just enough for me. What you did not say, I don't know. But what you said, I do know. God needed me to hear that. I'm not the only one out there. Sometimes you feel like, and I've got some age on you, Jessica, but Sometimes you feel like when you make mistakes at this age like that, it's like, girl, you're too old to be stupid. You're not too old to be tricked up the enemy. That's for sure. The thing is, is to have discernment. It's not age. It's discernment. And I thank God for that. So if you hear nothing else that I said, just know God loves you with an unconditional love. And so do I. And I want you to have a fantastic rest of your day. Please know God loves you. Know that God truly loves you. And there's nothing that you can do to hide from him and get away. He's, he knows where you are. So God loves you. I do too. And be blessed.